So Stan, the main touch point a lot of kind of our listeners, our watchers would have for you is with the vertical diet. Um, it's been hugely successful, obviously for Owen. It's been hugely successful for a massive amount of our athletes over the years who um, it tends to be our main, our main direction. We'll point people in for their nutritional stuff. Could you give us some of the background of the vertical diet or how you kind of started developing that thought process? Well, it was mostly trial and error. As you know, I've been competing for over 30 years, since 1986. And on both ends of the spectrum, I dieted down using over-restrictive diets and excess cardio to compete at a very low body fat percentage in bodybuilding, and ultimately became an IFBB pro. And I also did a lot of bulking to try and take my 140-pound, 18-year-old freshman in college physique up to a 300-pound power lifter. And so on both ends of the spectrum, uh, I did a lot of things wrong. I learned a lot from trial and error. I always said, if I knew then what I know now, I may have been uh, more successful or maybe uh, uh, suffered, I think, less of the downsides of, uh, of over-restrictive dieting and, and uh, uh, I think overeating on the bulking side, doing the dirty bulks. And I had well over 100 blood tests throughout my career. And so I was able to kind of see how these things affected me and affected my performance. Uh, we didn't have the internet back then. I didn't have the information we have today. Even my uh, studies in exercise science at the University of Oregon were, uh, you know, woefully, uh, I, I think, uh, short of the information that we have now available to everyone at the click of a button on on YouTube or, you know, just Googling. Uh, and we've got a lot of great professionals in the industry now that I, I refer to. And so I took my experience and obviously applied it to myself. That's my anecdote, applied it to my clients, which I had thousands of clients. I was a personal trainer all my life since college. Uh, and then, you know, hundreds of, of high school collegiate and professional athletes that compete. And then more recently in the last five years, partnered with a PhD RDN, uh, Damon McCune, and uh, bumped it up against the science to make sure that we were giving, you know, accurate information. And uh, so that's kind of how the vertical diet uh, was, was, uh, was born just out of, I think, competing, coaching, being coached, collaborating uh, with great minds and great athletes, uh, and then just eventually just documenting that and providing it to people. And it's very comprehensive. It's not just diet, of course, as you know, we talk about sleep and nutrition and digestion and uh, hormone optimization, uh, all the things that, uh, that go into you know, a well-rounded program so that my clients can get everything that I need them to do to be successful. And I always said that uh, really the vertical diet, kind of the way it came about was I was trying to build a foundation and say, well, how, how tall is, can a pyramid be? Well, it depends on, on how large its base is. And so it's really about creating that base. And that base is more than just nutrition, of course, it's in sleep and, and exercise as well and digestion. Uh, but the base includes you know, all the macros and all the micros and the things that uh, uh, that are important for, you know, reaching the optimum body composition and maintaining health, which was very important because a lot of what I do and did for myself throughout my career was kind of mitigate damage because competing isn't necessarily healthy. Uh, I think I did a, a YouTube rant that said, if you want to be healthy, don't compete. Uh, if you, there's a difference between health and fitness, fitness being uh, the ability to perform a particular duty or task and the fitness level required to be a world's strongest man or to be a UFC champion or even a 14-year-old gymnast in the Olympics is not necessarily healthy. So a lot of what we do behind the scenes, uh, even with a, a, a dad bod or a soccer mom in particular dieting down uh, and suffering from, uh, you know, the female triad, chronic calorie restriction, uh, you know, amenorrhea, anemia, hypothyroidism. All of those things are pretty prevalent in the diet industry today. They were kind of isolated to the competitive industry for many years, but now they've leaked out into the general public and people are applying those competitive competition diets and, and suffering from all those uh, those problems, as mentioned. And so uh, a lot of what I do for, for athletes and uh, for gen pop really is kind of mitigate damage, make it sustainable uh, and healthy so that they can have a better long term outcome. Stan, I think you're probably the main person I've seen in terms of trying to promote health among those elite athletes. So I think everybody kind of gets it at this stage that being the most, like they've been the highest performer in anything isn't going to necessarily make you live as long as possible or be as healthy for as long as possible. But at the same time, 
as aware of that fact you seem to be you obviously really push home with the stuff like with you know uh you talk about the cpap with eddie hall or after uh terrible slip of the tongue there um the wrong one so you you talk about you know making them as healthy as possible getting people's blood done as much as possible even for athletes who are not in performance dancing drugs so it's uh it's interesting that you push the health stuff as much as possible and have you seen that drastically or even you know significantly improve these elite athletes performance by making them healthier you know the by the the common metrics you'd look at health maybe yeah you know and i was concerned about that when i started working with some really uh you know uh, i think uh high level athletes is what can i do for these guys they're already genetically predispositioned they've already achieved you know an extraordinary high level of success and you know how much can you add uh, to their performance 10 pounds 50 pounds you know to a deadlift over the course of a year or two um, and and it, it becomes you, you kind of are concerned that maybe you don't uh, you don't have a value add there they've already kind of achieved all they're going to achieve um, we were able to see an improvement in performance across the board with the athletes that we've worked with but more importantly we made their job easier uh, some of it's just uh, just things like mechanically speaking being able to eat enough food for a large athlete uh, that can be a, a very daunting task uh, you've seen many many videos of people trying to uh, large athletes trying to gain weight or maintain their mass uh, and so you know we we composed a diet plan that just made that easier on them and then on the on the flip side of that the dieting uh, just making improving satiety and energy and trying to uh, maintain uh, some uh, some uh, some sleep over the year over the uh, last couple of months before competition you know you start things like that start to uh, to suffer and so uh, by uh, you know utilizing a more micronutrient dense diet less restrictive uh, on the dieting end we were you know just able to so for people it became more sustainable they could stay closer to competition weight longer uh, or more throughout the year instead of having the significant rebounds um, and then they didn't burn out. We see that a lot on both ends of the spectrum. We see dieters for, you know, this is bodybuilding figure physique, bikini, what I call the professional dieting industry. Uh, they burn out really quickly. They kind of get some, some severe metabolic adaptation and a lot of uh, yo-yo dieting going on. Uh, and on, on the uh, power lifters and bodybuilders and strongmen and uh, uh, also the, you know, linemen in football, you'd see a lot of them burn out uh, from a lot of it from overtraining, which some of that has to do with uh, you know a lot of sleep and nutrition inadequacies uh, yielding those those overtraining results uh, so you know we just tried to work with with people on both ends of the spectrum by creating that foundation of things that are really important and that includes just you know general movements not not overtraining as well Stan where do you want people to go find you at the moment or what's your kind of main kind of uh, endeavors at right now Everything's at Stan Efforting. StanEfferting.com is my website. At Stan Efforting is my Instagram. I have some great uh, YouTube content. My rants is going to be also Stan Efforting on YouTube. And of course, the Vertical Diet Meal Prep Company, uh, available nationwide in the United States and UK now, is uh, at TheVerticalDiet.com.